In this video, I'll demonstrate how you can create a Spark data frame from basic Python data structures, such as arrays. I'm in the official Spark documentation, spark.apache.org. Let's head over to the latest release under documentation. Then let's go to API docs and Python. Then click on API reference and expand Spark SQL. You can create data frames using the create data frame method which should be a part of the Spark Session class. So let's click on Spark Session. If you scroll down, you should see Create Data Frame. This method is used to create Spark data frames from various types of data structures like lists, dictionaries, RDDs, and pandas data frames. So you can see the parameters here. It takes one mandatory parameter, and that is data. The data itself, as I've mentioned, can be either an RDD or any iterable object. So you can technically provide an RDD, which is another Spark data structure, and convert that into a data frame. Or it can be any kind of SQL data representation. The schema argument is optional. This defines the structure of the data frame, and it can be specified in two ways. Using SQL-like DDL syntax, or a custom schema using struct type and struct field data types. If the schema isn't provided, then PySpark will try to infer the schema from the data. And the way the schema is inferred is that PySpark will inspect the data before assigning the data types. This can be inefficient as it involves multiple reads of the data, one for the inference of the schema and again for the actual data processing. Ideally, you would provide the schema but if you choose not to provide the schema, then you can use this sampling ratio argument to sample the ratio of rows used for inferring the schema. So rather than inferring the entire data set, you can just sample a portion of it. And then this verify schema argument is by default set to true. So if you do specify a schema, this will ensure that the data types of every row match the schema. Okay. So I'll now move into Databricks so I can show you some demonstrations. I'll focus specifically on the data and the schema arguments. So I'm in an empty notebook called Creating Data Frames in PySpark. I'm going to connect my cluster, which is up and running, to this notebook. So I'll create a simple data structure and assign it to a variable called data. And that will contain a single list element. And in that list element, it will contain the values John and 21. This represents an individual's name, and this is his age. So let's run this. So let's see what data type this is. So I can do it like so. So this is a list. Technically, it's a list containing lists, but it just contains a single list element. We can create a data frame from this object quite easily. And we can do that using the create data frame method. The create data frame method is part of the Spark session class. And by default, in a Databricks notebook, a Spark session is created and assigned to the variable Spark. So you can do spark.create data frame, as you can see. And then we can pass in this data as the first argument. So you could do data equals data, or just do it positionally and just type data like so. So let me run this. And that seems to have worked because it's returned a data frame here. We can also create the data frame by providing the data structure. So I could do spark dot create data frame, and then actually just provide this data structure as the first argument rather than the variable that the data structure is stored in. And this also works just fine. And we can verify that this is a data frame by using the type function. So I can do type and then provide this inside of that function. And it outputs spark pyspark.sql.dataframe.data frame. So this is a data frame object. So how can I see the contents of this data frame? Well, it can be done in a number of ways, but one approach is using the show method. So let me just get this data frame and then I will add on dot show like so. 
and now this will display the data frame. Here it is. It might actually be cleaner to assign this to a variable. So df equals, get rid of this show, and then do df.show. So I have stored the data frame in a variable called df, and then I have displayed it here by using the show method. And that works. You can, of course, spread this out in multiple cells. So now let me add a new data structure and assign that to the same variable of data. So I'm going to paste in this line. So now I have data stored as a list of tuples. So now there are multiple elements in the list. So let me run this. So now let me create a data frame with this data. So again, I will do df equals spark dot create data frame, and then I will pass in data. And then I will also display the data frame. So I'll do df dot show. So as you can see this time, the data frame has got multiple records, but you may have noticed that the columns don't have any meaningful names. They've been assigned this underscore one and underscore two to represent the position. And that is because this data structure doesn't give PySpark any indication to what the column names should be. This is where the schema argument can come in handy. So we can specify the column names like so. So let me actually just copy this. And then what I would like is to specify the schema as the second argument. And that will just be a list of what I would like the column names to be. And it needs to be in order. So I'd like this to be the name and this to be the age. So in a list, I can pass in string elements. This represents the column names of the data. And then I will do df.show. So let's run this line. So now we have the column names. And as you can see here, here are the data types assigned to the columns. They have been inferred because we have not specified the data types in the schema. We can be explicit and specify the data types in the schema using SQL-like data definition language, short for DDL. So what I can do is I can type the following. I can do df equals spark dot create data frame, pass in data as the first argument, and this time as a string, like so, I can pass in the schema using DDL. So I will have name as the first column, and that will be a string. And then I'll have age as the second column, which will be an integer data type. So notice this is SQL-like DDL syntax, and there doesn't need to be a space before and after. And then I will do df.show. So let's run this. And now, as you can see, the data type was previously long for age, but now because we've specified it, it is an integer for age. So this basically says what the column name should be and then the data type and a comma separates each column. So this is DDL syntax. So if you're familiar with SQL, then this should make sense to you. But how do we know what the data type names should be? Well, let me show you some documentation. This link details the data types available in Spark SQL. So let's scroll further down. So here are the data types available in Python. And then if we scroll here, here are the data types available in SQL. Since we used SQL-like syntax, we can use this conversion table. So notice I used string and I used int. So that is equivalent to the string type and the integer type data types in Spark SQL. So these are, this is almost like a mapping. If we use Python, then we need to specify these data types. And you can see the data types here with more of a description, so like so. So let's go back to the notebook. And we can also store this in a variable as well. So let me just store this in a variable schema equals this string. And we still have data stored in its own variable. So let me run this. And now this time I can do df equals spark dot create data frame and then data i could do data equals data and schema equals schema or i can just do it positionally but i will do it by specifying the name and then i will do df dot show and this should work the same way 
So this time I've just stored the schema in a variable and I have provided the arguments using the names. Okay, so as I was showing you before, let's define the data types using the PySpark data types. So let me go to the Spark SQL API documentation, which is on this tab here. Notice we have got the data types. So here are all the data types. Since they're in their own class, the data types class, we will need to import them. Remember that the methods under Spark session that we've currently been using are preloaded to the notebook because we already have an active Spark session. But methods in this class need to be imported. And before we continue, you should also know about two types, struct type and struct field. Let me navigate to struct type. Struct type represents the overall schema of a data frame. It's a collection of multiple struct fields. A struct field object defines a single column. So let's head over to struct field. Struct field represents a single column in the schema and it has three main parameters. Name, which is the name of the column, the data type of the column, and then whether it is nullable or not. So this is a Boolean value indicating whether a column can contain null values. If you specify true, then it can be nullable. If you specify false, then it cannot contain null values. And there is also this metadata argument as well. But we will be concerned with name, data type, and nullable. So let's head back over to the notebook. So now let me import the types required to create my schema using PySpark. So I have got name as string and age as integer. So I will need to import string type and integer type along with struct field and struct type. So I can type from pyspark.sql.types import struct type struct field string type and integer type. And note, anytime you do an import, the cell should be in the top of the notebook. But for now, since we're just doing a demonstration, I'll keep it here. So they've been imported. So now I'll create a schema variable and I will define the schema using struct type and struct field. So I will do struct type and then I'll open and close parenthesis and I will also open and close a list. Within each element of a list, we need a struct field. This represents each column. So this takes three arguments. First is the name of the column. So for the first one, this is just name. So I'll just say name. And then we specify the data type. So that will be string type. And you specify it with open and close parenthesis. And then for the nullable argument, I will say true. So it can be nullable. And then for the second column, I will do another struct field object. This time, I'd like it to be called age. It will be an integer type. And again, I will specify true. So let's run this. So we've defined the schema. So let's create the data frame. So again, I'll do df equals spark dot create data frame, provide data, and then provide the schema. This time I'll just do it positionally. And then I will do df dot show. And as you can see, this has also worked just as it did with the DDL syntax here. So we can clearly see the data types here, name is string, age is integer, but we can also check it using various attributes and methods. So one way is using the schema attribute. So for this data frame, if I do df.schema like so, and then run this cell, again, you can also press shift and enter to run the cell, then you can see the data types. So name is of string type, age is of integer type, Another way is using the D types attribute. So if you do DF dot D types and then run that, you can see the data types in this format. And then you can also do DF dot print schema, but this is a method. So you must do open close parenthesis. 
And now you can see like this. So this is done based on a tree level. And another way is by doing df.describe. And again, this is a method, so open close parenthesis. And here is a summary of the column names and the data types. So now, as one final example, I'll reassign the data variable to a different type of object. So this time, it is a list of dictionary elements. So each dictionary element represents a new row. But this dictionary is a different structure to the list of tuples that we previously used. This time we can infer what the column names should be because they're done in key value pairs. The key, which contains name, is repeating across each element and it represents the equivalent of a column in a table. And this is a value. So you have a key, colon, a value. So this is the data value. John and 21 represents the data values for the first row. So let's run this and create a data frame using this data, but we won't specify a schema. So I'll do df equals spark dot create data frame and then specify data. And then I will do df dot show. So as you can see, the column names are here. So because the dictionary elements are structured in this way, PySpark is able to identify what the column names should be. But previously, when we used this data structure, there was no way of knowing what the column names should be. However, it still inferred the data types. As you can see, age is long rather than int, but name is still a string. And the order is different. This time we have age first and then name. It's sorted alphabetically rather than positionally. So we can still specify the schema. So the schema is provided here. Further along, I can actually just copy this. And now I will specify the schema above, run this, and then do data and then schema, like so. And then run this again. And now this time, as you've noticed, the column ordering has changed and the data types have changed as well. Great. So in this video, you learn how to create data frames from various Python data structures, as well as define schemas using both SQL-like syntax and PySpark data types.